Today we're going to find the area of a circle using a rearrangement proof. So several mathematicians have used rearrangement proofs over the years. So two such mathematicians are Sato Motion and Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. Here's the basic idea. If you cut a circle into sectors, sectors are kind of like pizza slices, of the same size, and you split the final one, so the final little piece at the top, the yellow piece, into two equal pieces, so you have it, and you rearrange them, your new shape roughly resembles a rectangle. Um, the more sectors you use, the flatter the top and bottom of this rectangle will be. So there's a fun applet that you can try, created by Anthony Orr, um, and I think you guys should try it. So I'm gonna show you um, a couple examples on that. So the applet looks like this, it's on GeoGebra. And it says, what's the area of a circle? Explore with the following applet. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten the circumference, meaning we're gonna take the circumference of the circle and we're gonna lie it out flat along the bottom. This is similar to if you have a bike tire and you had a paint on it and you did one full revolution, that bike tire would um, do one circumference length um, when it painted. You're then gonna dissect it. And so what I mean by this is we're gonna break it into a certain number of pieces. Okay, so we have the red pieces and the blue pieces. And with this applet, you can decide how many parts you wanna di dissect it into. So you could go with more parts, right? Look how many, or just like six parts. So let's say we do six parts, right? When we rearrange it, we're gonna move this little green button and we're gonna move it out now it's flat, and then as we further move it over, see how those blue pieces are getting um, pushed back over. So right now, it doesn't really look like a rectangle. It kind of looks like a parallelogram, which we know a parallelogram has the same area as a rectangle, it's base times height. But what happens as we do more pieces? So let's say we go to 72 pieces. Well, now when we rearrange, looks like two combs being put together. Now we can see that it's more rectangular. Now there are still slightly curves, but the more and more pieces that you have, it ends up approximating um, a rectangle. So this is the idea of a limit. So we use limits when you get to calculus and so on. Um, so we're using limits, definitely. All right, so here are my questions. Well, what is the length of the final rectangle? Well, if you remember, when we laid it out along the circumference, we had our red part and our blue part, and that um, second part went back over. So it ends up being half of the circumference. So half of pi d, pi times diameter, or you might call um, the circumference 2 pi r, you might have heard that. So if you take half of 2 pi r, you end up getting just pi r. So the length of the rectangle is pi r. The height of that rectangle is r, and then the area of the rectangle, as we know, is like base times height or length times width. In this case, I'm using length and height. So we have length times height is pi r multiplied by the r. Therefore, that means that the area of the circle, we, all we did is we rearranged those pieces of the circle. That's why it's called a rearrangement proof. And so it ends up being pi r squared. So that's how we find the area of a circle, very fun. Um, so we're gonna use the area of the circle in some lessons that we do later in the week. Um, good luck to you.